Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milenia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alfredi and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Ba. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, supervisor of elections hits out at Charlie Bamba. Police to provide around 2,000 personnel for election. And Latoka Settlement gets good news from government. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Speight. This is not the time to be playing or joking around with information and things should be taken seriously now as the election approaches, says election supervisor Mohammed Sanim. Sanim was hitting out at Sadelpa member Charlie Mbamba for his social media post last week. Akusit Tale reports Sanim has made it clear Mbamba's post is false and misleading. A Facebook post by Sodalpa member Charlie Mbamba shows misleading information that many voters have been registered at more than one polling station. Mbamba specifically points out why district school in Singatoka, Yavu in Lomaiviti and DAV College in Ba, but the elections office has denied this. We will be uh, pursuing legal avenues for, for this type of behavior, uh, particularly if someone represents a political party and uh, this sort of behavior will only lead to misinformation regarding the whole election process. And uh, this is not the time to joke around. Uh, this is the time to be serious about the election. The updated registered voters at Y District School is 110, 86 in Yavu, and 360 in DAV College, which totally contradicts the figures by Bamba. The post has since been taken down. I would like to invite political parties if you find that you have issues with any voters register or any operational logistical matter, kindly raise it with us first so that we are able to clarify the, the issues or if there is any errors, we will be able to remedy it. The idea is that the whole election is to be undertaken by all stakeholders together. Sanim has reiterated this is an opportune time for Fijians to determine that the Fijian Elections Office is a credible and accurate source for election-related information. FBC News. Akosita now joins us live. Akosita, has there been any word from Charlie Mbamba on the issue raised by the supervisor of election? Jackie, I can confirm that Charlie Mbamba has admitted to making a mistake. Now, speaking to FBC News a while ago, uh, um, Charlie Mbamba um, um, has apologized unreservedly for the uh, error pointed out by the Elections Office for the uh, double registration of voters at some of the polling stations around the country, which has been highlighted this afternoon. Uh, and this is also the reason why he has confirmed that the post has been taken off Facebook. He has uh, also made it clear that this post was made by him and not by Sodalpa. Jackie. Thanks so much for that update, Akusita. Close to 2,000 police officers have been specifically tasked with election duty on November 14th. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venegilio has confirmed this, adding that for now, normal police operations will continue together with routine police work around the country. Akusita Tale reports all facets of security pertaining to the electoral process have been factored into their operations. The police force is ready to provide security for the nation as we head to the polls in the next 42 days. Yes, the, the Fiji police force uh, had been preparing well in advance uh, with the uh, supervisor of elections uh, on training and uh, dry runs on various scenarios uh, over a long period of time. Uh, and we had been... Uh, Postured ready for elections uh, since the completion of training. Officers will be deployed to provide security at polling stations, provide security of ballot boxes and officials, as well as overseeing that the electoral process is followed. Meanwhile, Supervisor of Elections Mohammed Sanim adds only police officers will provide security to the ballot boxes during the election. The Fiji Police Force has been given adequate budget, training, as well as resources to ensure that it provides election time security. Sanim also clarified the Fijian Elections Office will not hire any private security firm for any security purpose during the 2018 general election. Akusita Tale, FBC News.
The Fiji First Party held its first 2018 election campaign meeting in Nakasi Nausori last night. Party leader Vorenge Mbani Marama, along with some proposed candidates, were part of the meeting. During the gathering, the ruling Fiji First Party heard concerns from the public regarding minimum wage rate and certain policies they wanted addressed. Bani Marama told those present to be aware of other political parties and their motives as the campaigning period for the upcoming general election has started. The party leader said it is important for Fijians to beware of some politicians as they will use race as a political tool, as they have done in the 2014 general election. Those present also praise the policies and initiatives the Fiji First Party has implemented in the last four years. One of only two new parties to throw their hat into the political race to the polls, Unity Fiji is talking up its game as a party that puts people first and one that wants to ensure a holistic approach to economic development. Party leader and former Reserve Bank Governor Savanada Narumbe says their immediate priority is finalising their candidate list, with 37 to be confirmed in addition to their 14 provisional candidates announced earlier this year. Maggie Boyle reports. Who else will make up Unity Fiji is now priority number one for the party. We're still aiming for 51 candidates as the maximum that uh, we can nominate. Uh, we have announced uh, 14, so we'll make uh, uh, another announcement as we file our nomination, which will be in the next week. Party leader Savanada Narumba yeah, says they're a party for... different from the rest. We are quite encouraged. I mean, tremendous uh, kind of support that uh, we are getting. I think they like the message that we are talking about. They like the new approach. They like the fresh thinking. They like to see our experience being put on the table. While the party is new, he says their candidates have proven themselves in their respected fields. We have good leadership, proven leadership in the area of financial and economic management. And I think that's where our comparative advantage is. Unity Fiji is expected to submit their nomination of 51 candidates by Thursday next week, as well as launch their manifesto. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Seven members who are part of the multinational observer group have now arrived in Fiji ahead of the 2018 general election. The seven Australian nationals have been accredited by the Fijian Elections Office and have already begun their work, starting with yesterday's issuance of the election writ. The full complement of MOG will also include representatives from India and Indonesia. The observer group is expected to hold a press conference later this week to elaborate on their operations. The Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission is in the middle of preparing teams for the upcoming general election. Commission Director Ashwin Raj says in addition to the groundwork of the election brochure, now published in six languages, they're also working on teams to be stationed at various locations across the country. Raj says monitoring the lead up to polling day and after will be the key area of focus for them. Keep an eye out for things like, you know, hate speeches, you know, extremism, you know, dissension into political violence. I think we need to be very, very vigilant. Uh, we need to be able to receive complaints uh, by individuals. Um, and that's where we come in, you know, in terms of uh, accountability, um, you know, audits and so on and so forth. It was good news for more than 150 residents of Kuroipita settlement in Lautoka as they will soon have electricity. The wait for a number of years is now finally coming to an end and Christmas will not only bring cheer but also lights. Filipe Naikaso has more. These residents in stage 2 of Kuroipita settlement received one of the best news ever. I've just been on the phone and talking to uh, various people including from uh, Minister of Economy and the uh, they've spoken to the Department of Energy and also to EFL, or what was commonly known as uh, FEA. And I've been assured that you all get connected to electricity before Christmas. One of the main missions of Corey Peter Settlement is to give poor families an opportunity to break free from the cycle of poverty and provide an improved quality of life. Expand the housing estate here uh, by another 145 houses. That would bring the estate at Koripita up to 378 houses. The residents have also praised the project managers for looking after them. Yeah, good for me and my family, children, eh? especially my kids. They got everything what they want from this 
private community. Easy for us because the rent is so cheap, easy. It's for five dollars now we're paying eight dollars because three dollars for that uh, garbage, the rubbish. Eh? It is a very good place for us and it's eight dollar rent we can save more money over here. The model town's charitable trust that looks after Koripita settlement has so far built 979 homes that have housed more than 4,000 people. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Still to come, anemic children continue to concern health ministry and U.S. Navy ship to continue helping the Pacific. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas on the Wagarong and Bula Fib, Nabondo and a Seri. I was it says a Lambasa, and the Teleta in Wagarong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Seri. We have the Tumeli, a Kuana Town of Hingatoka, Teleta in Wagarong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Seri. Never go find in a town and go sing a talk. I get on the Talita Canambula FM, number two and a serre. Bula FM, number two and a serre. A prominent Suva lawyer charged with one count of possession of illicit drugs pleaded not guilty in the Suva magistrate's court today. Shazran Abdul Latif voluntarily surrendered himself yesterday afternoon after he failed to appear when his case was called in court yesterday. A bench warrant that was issued against him has been cancelled. Latif's lawyer informed the court today they had thought that the matter would be called on the 2nd of November. Latif also agreed to pay $100 as cost for not appearing in court. The prominent lawyer was arrested last month in a drug raid at a Suva hotel. He's alleged to have been in possession of methamphetamine. The matter has been adjourned to October 25th. Almost half of the children surveyed in Fiji face iron deficiency and around 60% under the age of 5 are anemic. This was revealed following a national nutrition survey conducted by the Ministry of Health and Medical Services. Kritika Kumar reports. Health Minister Rosie Agbar says if people are not cautious, anemia can cause serious health problems. Obviously, uh, people would know that uh, when you are anemic, it comes with fatigue, you know, people are tired, it affects our physical and uh, cognitive development and, and it, it does affect our children's ability to perform well in schools. The minister highlighted there are short-term and long-term solutions for anemia. This is just a supplementary to the, uh, to the lack of uh, micronutrients that the children may have. So all in all, it's, uh, it, it, the onus is upon the parents to ensure that the child eats a balanced, balanced diet meal. Meanwhile, National Iron and Micronutrition Supplement Program Project Officer Kiti Soravaki says parents play a vital role in keeping their children healthy. And we're also asking uh, parents to uh, learn about anemia, learn about the uh, eating habits that can uh, improve um, um, the states of uh, the uh, anemia in children. In order to decrease the iron deficiency in the children, the Ministry has rolled out the National Iron and Micronutrition Supplement Program in 89 schools, whereby they will give iron tablets to students. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Health Ministry has covered 72% of the country under its Mincy vaccination program since the outbreak in May earlier this year. Minister Rosie Akbar says in order to achieve the remaining 28% coverage, the Ministry will commence house-to-house -house visitations nationwide to vaccinate those who might have missed out. Rachel Nath with the story. The Health Ministry will carry out the house-to-house -house visitation through the assistance of its community health workers in all four divisions. Uh, we have a widespread network of community health workers which will be assisting our um, outreach teams. So we are able to target every individual between that age group. So that we will be doing. Obviously we will be going back to the schools where we, we still have some students who missed out. The ministry highlights 341,885 children have been immunized so far. Because of that, we have been able to contain the outbreak. But all in all, we'd still like to advise the, um, the, the public that vaccination is not the solution. It doesn't protect you for life. People and families, the community still need to engage in uh, best hygiene practices. The World Health Organization says they're happy with the progress made so far. There is evidence that with the mass vaccination campaign, the number of new suspected cases is falling. 
Clearly, it's premature at this stage to declare the outbreak open. The ministry is urging those children aged between 1 to 19 years to visit their nearest health centres to be vaccinated. Rachel Nahr, FBC News. The U.S. Navy vessel USS Shoup berthed at the King's Wharf in Suva this morning. It will maintain its presence in the Pacific to help preserve peace and security. Commanding Officer Andy Strickland says the U.S. Navy multi-mission vessel will be important in the next few days while its crew members carry out community work in the capital city. Savaritambo reports. There are more than 300 U.S. Naval officers and crew members aboard the USS Shoup. Commander Strickland says this is the first time the ship has visited Fiji on its mission of maritime security in the area. All the countries in this region have experienced economic prosperity, largely because of the security and stability that exists at sea. Fiji is a key partner in the Western Pacific and we're here to enjoy this beautiful country. According to Scriptologic Warfare Officer Ivy Hicks, out of 300 crew members, more than 30 are junior officers. Uh, more junior and less experienced, but they usually have a different way of thinking about a problem or approaching it. So uh, the term think outside the box or, you know, they would voice it. They just might not understand. And by us saying, why do we do it this way? It helps out um, the senior leadership to communicate to them, like, well, we have to do it. The ship was deployed in July for duty in the Pacific. The last port visited was Guam. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. Mahatma Gandhi's beliefs are still relevant to society today as he urged the value of truth and non-violence in humanity. Speaking at his 150th birth anniversary in Suva yesterday, President Major General Retai Chiochi Konrote says people can learn from his heroic efforts. Mahatma Gandhi's five pillars of non-violence, respect, understanding, acceptance, appreciation and compassion are absolutely vital to our existence. Now, these are simple habits, characteristics, or traits that we can all try to emulate and nurture at a personal level, which will have an impact on our relationship with one another. Coming up in sports later, Jamie will have all the latest on the IDC. But before that, here's Rachel with all the day's business updates. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening. And coming up after the break, BSB launches new service for Fijians. And in going Fiji, work on Tamavua Estate to start next month. Stay with us. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Koroko, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigger, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In business tonight, the BSP Life and Insurance Provider launched a, Bula, a new product called Bullet Delight today, aimed at low income earners. Managing Director Malakai Nyanga says, due to the high demand of short term financial plans by low income earners, they have launched the Bullet Delight. He says the package also has funeral assistance, critical illness, and dis permanent disability, as well as accident death cover. Nyanga adds there are 150 professional insurance advisors at 10 customer service centers Fiji-wide to provide assistance to Fijians. A quick cash returns, meaning customers receive 10% of the sum insured every three years of the policy term to final maturity. Total has launched the Startup Up Challenge of the Year, which is designed to support and reward young entrepreneurs who have a project or created a company in the past two years. People aged between the rather people between the ages of 18 to 35 can submit their ideas on any field of activity. The ideas submitted will be scrutinized by a panel of judges and three winners will be picked. Total will provide coaching and financial support to the winners. This campaign will also have a top Female Entrepreneur Award. Contributing to local economic development is also about providing communities around us with the means to shape and manage the development independently.
and based on their own priorities. The starter of the year uh, by Total Challenge is an initiative to achieve this objective by creating value and opportunities in Fiji. And it's time for Sharon to give us the latest from the money markets. There were mixed concerns in the market today. Political disputes over Italy's budget plan to cut the deficit to 2% in 2021 weighed on market sentiments. However, there was a better risk mood on Wall Street. The US dollar gave back some ground despite Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell delivering an upbeat speech. Meanwhile, the Australian dollar fell briefly as weak building data fanned concerns of a slowdown. And New Zealand's global dairy prices fell for the fourth time as ramped up supply outpaced robust demand. Investors will remain on edge this week with European politics and emerging market strains still high on the agenda. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Vinaka. Thanks, Sharon. On to the exchange rates. The Chinese yuan and the US dollar dropped overnight, while the Fiji dollar made gains against the Aussie and Kiwi dollar, as well as the euro, while slipping slightly against the Kina and the Yan. As for the commodities market, oil fell a bit, uh, closing at $75. Uh, per barrel. Gold jumped to close at 1,206 per ounce and silver gained closing at 1,471 per ounce. And in Green Fiji tonight, work on the new Tamavua Estate will start by the end of next month. Tamavua Estate is an $8 million boutique collection of four luxury homes and close to being sold out. These three home estates cater for a wide variety of owners, including families and professional couples. Pacific Building Solutions Public Relations Manager Atilete Lama says the project is expected to be completed by the end of next year. It's a collection of four luxury homes. Each home is, uh, uh, is pet friendly, so you, it's a three bedroom home. Um, not, it's quite different from our apartment blocks. Yeah? It has you have your own compound. One family. It's very. It's designed for families. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Suva football gets a major boost ahead of IDC. And Nandi banks on two key players, this and more after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM, Rock in Lombasa. I'm Sona Man. Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Single Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. The Suva football team has set its target to end its four-year drought in the Court Centre District Championship, which kicks off this weekend. The Capital City side will be bolstered with a $10,000 sponsorship as they bid for the IDC title. Meli Tavanga reports. Lifting the IDC Cup was something the Suva football side has missed in the past four years. A bit of uh, hindrance, uh, uh, weather was not uh, in favour of us. Uh, I think last week, uh, about three days, we didn't train. But apart from that, uh, everything is, is okay. Otherwise, we, 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 are, we are prepared to, to face Nadi, and we will give Nadi a good time. With more experienced and new players in the squad, the side is still deciding the positions of its players. It's still uh, like uh, seeing, trying to see, fill in which players to play with. Like we got about eight or eight, nine new players. So still we are just trying to fit in where they can fit in well to play. The capital city side's preparation will be bolstered by a $10,000 sponsorship check received today. As you know, Lincoln Refrigeration is not only supporting a district, but uh, supporting the country in sports. And that's where we, we're here to support the sports. The sports uh, uh, like soccer, like every, every, each and everyone is enjoying, like it's coming up this weekend. Suva plays Nandi in its opening 6 p.m. match at Suva's Indian Stadium on Friday. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports.
Former Waitakere midfielder Horace James and veteran utility Krishna Sami have been included in the Nandi football team for the IDC. The team will be without star striker Napoleon Ngasava Katini, who has joined Suva. But the belief within the Jet Setters camp is that the two new inclusions will boost the side's chances. Russell Prasad reports. Cool and calm, the Nandi football players ready to battle come Friday. Bill is lost, but I, I'm pretty sure we have other players who are capable enough to fill in uh, the void that he has left. Uh, and I'm confident they will do the job for us. With the strikers like Rusia Tematerarenga in the team, Nandi has strengthened its midfield by injecting experienced players. Quite a year player in New Zealand and our fans have assisted us to bring uh, him in uh, and hopefully we can get his clearance tomorrow. Goalkeeper and captain Verity Dixon expects his side to give Suva a tough challenge in the first game. I hope so. We aim for a win against uh, Suva in the first game. It's really going to be hard. It's was many good players. It's been nine years since the Jet Setters last won the IDC and the belief is that this bunch can change the fortunes in 2018. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Fiji Airways Nrua side began preparations today for its clash against the Canberra Vikings in the sixth round of the Australian National Rugby Championship on Saturday. With no major injuries in the team, all the players hit the ground running at Prince Charles Park for their first session of the week. Coach Sinirusi Seruvakula says they'll be putting in a lot of emphasis in their forwards to counter the threat from the Vikings up front. We just need to be focused, uh, focus on uh, what we're doing. Uh, uh, the Vikings have a big uh, forward pack and, uh, and there's a lot of uh, the, our, play, our boys need uh, to be urgent, urgency in, into tackling uh, and defending the, that, that mall. And uh, that's one area that uh, we're working on, uh, on, uh, on today and, uh, and tomorrow. European champions Real Madrid fell to a surprise 1-0 Champions League defeat by CSK Moscow in Russia. Tony Kraus gave the hosts their goal in the second minute with a terrible back pass that was picked up by Nikola Vlasic. Edin Dzeko scored a hat-trick and Houston Cliver became Roma's youngest Champions League goal scorer in a 5-0 win over Victory Plazen. David Silva scored the winning goal for Manchester City as they defeated Hoffenheim 2-1 this morning. The Spaniard also played a key role in Sergio Aguero's equaliser in the first half. All Black prop Owen Franks is relishing the challenge of facing the Springboks on Sunday and feels there is still plenty to play for in Pretoria. In today's play of the day, despite losing by three sets to Fernando Vadasco, Gail Monfils struck a brilliant shot at the Beijing Tennis Open. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and the new media. Find out how to keep tabs and manage your child's smartphone usage. Details coming up. Radio Fiji One, Nandomuiviti. Radio Fiji One, Nandomuiviti. And it's weather time now with Angie. there and welcome to the weather world. As we are approaching the cyclone season, the conditions are getting quite breezy and rainy due to a low pressure system gradually moving towards us. A heavy rain warning remains in effect for most of the country. Do take care, especially in this rainy season. Taking a look in the west, slight showers with throughout more rolling in later tonight. Eastwards from Pekhabarasuva, a very rainy day with thunderstorms also in the bag. And up north, more of the same rainy weather. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots with rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 1.18 a.m. with low tide at 7.51 a.m. Sunrise at 5.46. For tomorrow, there is no exciting news as this wet weather is set to continue. Tomorrow's stems, Suva will be the coolest spot with high of 27 degrees. And looking further on to Friday, well, you know what we can expect? Yes more showers so stay safe and keep warm
That's all from the FTC by the world. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, is there enough respect given to the elderly in our society? No, I think there's no respect for old people. It's simple. If you want to succeed in life, you just have to respect our elders and parents because that will take us far in life. Yes, we should respect the old people. Yes, I think the people there usually respect the elderly people. Recapping the main stories for tonight, supervisor of elections hits out at Chalimbamba, police to provide around 2,000 personnel for election, and lawyer pleads not guilty in drug case. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, are you, are you wearing pink this month to support breast cancer awareness? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, Atelini Vatuloka sent in this shot of Nandi Airport with our airline Fiji Airways ready for another flight. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and me, stay safe, stay warm. Good night. My Navneet Nan, Nambualum Bua Se, Jaysay Freni North, Mashur Hai, Waysay Radio Fiji 2 Bhi, Sabhi Jaga Mashur Hai. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkan. Seema Nakasi Se, Mai Radio Fiji 2 Pasan Karthi Hu Sunne Ke Liye, Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkan. Mai Hu Uncle King, Singer Toka Town Ke, Taxi Driver, Daysay Rugby Fame Se, Waysay Radio Fiji 2 Fame Se. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharkan.